Greetings everyone, this is Non Expert here and today we are going to be talking about the Builder Design Pattern. The Builder Pattern comes under the Creational Pattern classification as it also deals with some sort of object creation mechanism. The intent behind a Builder Pattern is that it lets you construct complex objects step by step and using the same construction code allows you to produce different types of objects easily. The reason why you might want to use a Builder Pattern is best illustrated by taking an example. So let's look at a problem statement. So imagine that you've been tasked with creating a rent a house app, something similar to Airbnb or whatever that you're comfortable with. Obviously for an application like this, there are going to be several complicated sub pieces. However, for the purposes of this video, we're going to look at one particular specification, which is that your application should support different types of houses that require step-by-step -step initializations of many fields and nested objects. Whenever I refer to fields and nested objects over here, what I'm referring to is attributes of a house. So for a house, you would require it to have walls, a floor, a door or doors, windows, roofs, and so on and so forth. Apart from the generic stuff, you might have houses which have additional features such as they might have a yard, balconies, swimming pools, um, garages, and so on and so forth. So you want to build out an application which handles everything. So to solve this problem, you might be thinking that the way you can go about this is by using inheritance, where you have a simple base house class which handles all the basic stuff, which can be inherited by multiple other subclasses which can handle the new additional features which are coming in. A solution of this approach might look something like this. You have a class called house, which is your base class, and it handles all the basic attributes that a house should have. So it takes in all the arguments and then makes the necessary associations to the our attributes which you need. Additionally, whenever you want to create a new house with extra features, you basically would create a subclass. Like if you want to introduce a swimming pool, you would have a house with swimming pool, which inherits the base class called house. And it handles the new additional features that's coming in and lets the base class handle everything else. So you can see that there are potential drawbacks to this problem. So starting with whenever you have new features which are going to come in you'll have to create a new subclass and then you will have to worry about making sure that the associations are correct and you're letting the base class handle a lot of stuff and that assumption might not always be true as you might have floors which might be different you might have doors you might have windows which might be different and there might be those things which are actually breaking your code Apart from that, there would be additional features which are introduced, which would just increase the number of combinations of your houses. Therefore, for each combination, you would have to create a new subclass, which would have to inherit the base class, and that would just make a code unsustainable and development would just become a headache. Therefore, it becomes difficult for you to introduce new changes as you would have to you know, worry about too many things. Another approach to solving the problem that's at hand might be that you have one class which handles everything for us. The way to go about that is that you would have a constructor which takes in a bunch of arguments and then makes the necessary associations to the attributes. A solution of this approach might look something like this, where you have one class which has a constructor which takes in a bunch of arguments and makes the necessary associations to the attributes. So for a floor attribute, you're associating it with the floor argument, for a door with a door, a window with a window, and so on and so forth. However, this is just uh, for demonstration purposes only. Obviously, you're gonna have much more complicated logic over there which will have to handle like validations and so on and so forth. Apart from all of that, there's also problems with Whenever you talk about conventions, conventions dictate that you should not have more than six arguments inside your function as it makes your function difficult to read and code upon. Apart from just conventions, you can see that there would be certain things like I would have to pass in nuns where I don't really need anything and that just becomes more and more of a headache. Obviously you can handle this by using keyword arguments but then you have to worry about you know, maintaining those keyword arguments and that just becomes more 
um, code pieces that you have to worry about. Additionally, when you have to introduce more and more features or additional features which you're not foreseen so far, you would have to also worry about the step-by-step -step implementation that we were talking about, which is that there are dependencies which are being created which we're not really handling. Such as if you have a floor or if you have windows, a windows would require walls. So if a wall is not really there, then it would just give problems. Certain things like a roof cannot really exist without a floor and so on and so forth would also exist. So those dependencies would have to be, you would have to take care of them. And that just becomes more and more code inside your constructor. And that's not really the best practice that we are looking for. So to solve this problem, um, we use the builder pattern. What the builder pattern suggests is that you extract the object construction code out of its own class, so no constructors, and you move it to a separate class called a builder. The objects of this class builder is call, uh, obviously called builders. So the pattern organizes the object construction into a set of steps. So for each attribute that we have, we would have a specific function which would handle that for us. So inside your builder class, you would have these methods like a build floor, which handles the association of a floor with floors, um, build doors, which handles the association of doors and so on and so forth. Therefore, to create an object, all you would have to do is you would just have to call the necessary um, functions or these series of steps to create the object. And then once you're done with all these series of steps, you basically call a function which combines everything for us. I do want to mention that some of the construction steps might seem a little different in implementation, and that might just be because you're doing it for a different product. Over here, we're looking at a rent a house app. However, you might want to introduce a feature like rent a room. Well, for those pieces, you're using a house, which is a product, but your product sort of changes focus as it becomes a room instead. So you would have a different builder for it. Additionally, for the builder design pattern, there's a new nomenclature which has actually been introduced over here, which is called director class. Essentially, you don't really need to worry about it because it's not necessary for you to always have this as you would see in our code piece. However, the purpose of this is, is that it controls the algorithm that generates the final product object. This could also just be a simple function as well, which basically does the orchestration for us. So to summarize, you have a director class or a function which defines the order in which the execution of steps should happen. Whereas the builder basically provides the implementation of those steps and your product, which is your main product that you're building on, doesn't really like handle any of the object construction code. So let's take a look at how you would go about implementing a solution like this. So you have a class called house, which is your main product that we were talking about before. And you can see over here that I don't really have any constructor. Additionally, what this allows me to do is the house itself does not really need to worry about like necessary associations and so on and so forth. Instead, what it can focus on is the main logic that you might want to introduce inside your app, such as since you have a house, you might want to generate a receipt or uh, generate a summary of things or so on and so forth. Over here, what I've done is I've just basically overridden the, or uh, called the wrapper dundo method, which basically stands for the representation. So whenever I call the object class, it would basically print out the necessary attributes which we built out so far. So let's take a moment and look at how you would go about creating the builder, which will create or give us the implementation for building out the house attributes. The way you would go about this is by starting with creating a class. Over here, we're just gonna call it the house builder class. The next step is just gonna be creating an init. And over here, I've just um, initialized a bunch of variables, which are just gonna be private variables for us. However, you don't really need to do this. And the reason why I'm doing this over here is just so that my code doesn't break whenever I call an attribute which does not really exist. You could sort of update your code to make it more succinct. 
However, for the purposes of this video, I've just added this in so that we know which all attributes we are tackling. So for our host builder, the attributes it would tackle is that it would make the necessary associations for floors, doors, and a roof. So to make the necessary adjustments, as I stated before, you would create a step, which basically is a function, which takes care of the association of a certain attribute. So for floor, I would have a build floors method, which basically takes in the instance and another argument, which is floors and associates that to the main attribute of the class. Another thing to note over here, which is actually really important, and it's not really necessary that you have this in place, but it makes the code a lot more readable and a lot more friendly to other coders as well, which is that you're returning the instance of the object itself. What this allows us to do is it allows us to perform chaining of operations, which you will see in the next part. So we built out the build floors method or the build floor step. Now the next step is the door step, which we can just do the same thing. And over here, it's pretty straightforward so far. And essentially what you're doing is you're setting a bunch of setter functions. However, you can also handle a bunch of validation steps, which you might require inside each particular function. The next would be a build roof, which is also pretty similar. And at the end, we have a build house method. Now the build house method is basically going to do the building of the main object or the main product for our case. So what it's going to do is it's going to start by initializing a house object and then make the necessary associations to the current object that we already have. So for the house object, we're associating the floor with the floors that we have within this object so far, which have been set. And also at the end of all of this, we just return the house object. Essentially what this would do for us is this is our main piece of code, which collects everything and just combines it and makes sure that the object is created. What this would also do for us is that it would make sure that the house is always ready to go. The object that has been created after the build house is being called is initialized and there's no more construction code that needs to be built upon it. To use this code, you could use it by just calling a new variable. We'll call it simple house one. And what I've done over here is I've basically just tried to instantiate the variable um, or the object. I've called it house builder. And what I'm doing over here is the chaining of operations. And the reason that I'm able to actually do this is because I'm actually returning the instance of the object which is being passed in. So when I have this, all I have to do is I have just to call build floors, pass in the necessary arguments and go with the next step. So it's a more step-by-step -step approach. Now, in order for somebody to create a new house, they would just have to add in these steps and they would be done. This makes your code a lot more readable as well. And when you, whenever you look at like Java nomenclatures or whenever you look at Java builders, you would see it, you know, going through stuff like this as well. So let's go ahead and execute this and also see what's going on with the simple house. So once I've created the simple house, essentially what it's done is it's returned a house object for me. And when I call a print on it, it's basically going to call this stripper where we can look at all the attributes that have been passed in. So you have floors, which have the marble floor, which was basically the argument which was being passed in doors, which was woods, which was the same argument which was being passed in and roof, which is the type of roof which you might have, which is flat. Obviously, this would be more complicated than that because you might have different um, attributes. You might be able to pass in objects as well. However, for the purposes of this video, we're just taking a simple string. Now, we talked about how difficult it was to introduce new arguments whenever we were using a simple one class approach inside a constructor. However, for this approach, if we want to introduce something new, say a yard, we could probably just do it through just adding a self yard attribute and then sort of creating a new method called build yard, which basically does the association of building a yard and then updating the build house function to make sure that it's being associated to the main product. 
the reason why I was passing in, um, the reason why I actually have a constructor over here is because if I don't really have this and this build floors or build doors has not been called, it basically throw an error stating that this particular attribute does not exist. That could be solved by using um, get attributes or using defaults. But um, just for the purposes of this video, we are just using nuns over here. Um, but you can reduce this code a lot more. So now we have our house builder and what we can see over here is that it's not affecting the already existing logic. If I run this, I'm not going to have any new differences. The only difference is that there's a new um, attribute which is getting introduced. However, it's not going to break my code at all. And if I want to create a new house with a yard, all I have to do is I just have to call build yard over here and it will basically take care of everything else. So I would have to just go through the same steps and using the same steps that have been given to us by the builder function or the builder class, we can just go ahead and create the necessary product that we have. Therefore, if I just go ahead and execute this, you can see that a yard is associated with a string yard over here. As you can see over here, there are multiple things which are happening at the same time. And there's a lot of code as well. However, the code is only there at the very beginning, which is whenever you're creating and initializing the products and creating the builders. The reason why the builder function is, or the builder design pattern is so important to understand is because there would be steps in your workflow which you have to take care of. Certain things have to execute before the next step to execute as well. And this can be used to control all of that. Apart from all of that, it just makes your code a lot more readable and developer friendly as well. As you could see that in order for me to introduce a new variable, I didn't really have to worry about too many things. So let's take a moment and look at the pros of using a design pattern. First, the parameters are always provided in highly readable method calls. They're also highly testable as well. Therefore, whenever I want to call something out, I would always know what particular thing I am doing. This setter operation is always handled by our code itself, or our builder code rather. Apart from that, the builder design pattern also helps us in minimizing the number of parameters in the constructor, and thus there is no need to pass in stuff like nulls for option optional parameters to the constructor, and so on and so forth. Obviously, Python is not really that strict. However, for other languages, you might have to define a particular type and that would just give you extra headache and that could just be handled by using a builder pattern. Additionally, your objects is always instantiated in a complete state. As mentioned before, whenever you call the build house method, which does the end part of like collecting everything and just building out the necessary object, you would always have a complete object with you. What that means is that now this particular object is ready to go and you can call the necessary operations that your class actually needs to handle. You don't really have to worry about whether the thing has been instantiated yet as the builder has already taken care of it for you. And the last pro is that immutable objects can be built without much complex logic in object building process as well. There is a con of the design pattern of this particular design pattern, which is the fact that you have to include some more lines of code. However, do note over here that the number of lines of code is not going to increase exponentially ever. It's only going to increase step by step as new attributes are going to be introduced. And that's it for today's video. If you did like this video, do give a like. And if there's something you didn't understand, do leave it in the comment section below. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you've already subscribed to this channel, you're awesome, we all know it, and have an awesome day. Thank you so much.